Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Let's talk Too Many Bones Unbreakable. Now, I'm going to go over, because, you know, we hear all the hype. You hear from all of the other videos, you know, this is an amazing game. This concept of video is going to be slightly different. It's sort of a different twist on the should you back side of things. Because, although those are nice, although I think those are helpful sometimes, but, you know, when you ever read a review, if you're like me, you look at the review and you go, what are the negatives of this review? Because sometimes those negatives are, I'm completely okay with. And if I'm completely okay with the biggest complaints that somebody else has about a game, well, then the game is probably going to be great for me, right? And that's what I'm going to try and do with this video. So this video is not to tell you this game is awful. Let me put that out there. This game is awful. That, that, that's not the purpose at all whatsoever. The purpose is to say, are you okay with these things to sort of check your hotness, check your FOMO, check your hype? from that side of things. So that, okay, if you go, Chris, you know what? Those are no issues for me. I'm okay with all those. Great. Okay, let's do this then. Get it, it's right for you. Awesome. And now let's talk, the first one in this series we're gonna be doing is Too Many Bones Unbreakable. So what do you need to know? What are the five reasons that you should not back this game? Let's talk. This game right now is like a tidal wave. And when games get to this point and they start cresting, they start crashing down on people that wouldn't even normally look at a game like this because people want to get in on that side of things. And that's point number one. That's the FOMO being driven. Everyone else is doing it. Oh man, this looks like such a cool game. I don't know anything about it. It's an expensive game, but I mean, there's 8,000 other people doing this and I must be missing out if I don't. Okay, you got plenty of games on your shelf. You got plenty of games on your shelf that are probably unplayed. That's okay. If you know anything about chip theory games, or if you don't know anything about chip theory games, all of this will be at retail. There is no FOMO, period. There is a little bit of in stock and out of stock sometimes. Like right now, a lot of this is out of stock because people are again, jumping on that tidal wave, trying to catch up with this thing. But a couple months from now, six months from now, a year from now, you'll have no problem getting it at retail. Now, you're going to pay a little bit more, but you'll also probably know at that point whether or not this is for you because in these six days where you're frantically typing and watching reviews and looking at things, trying to figure out whether or not it's right for you, you may not be able to figure that out. You may have a friend who gets it in a month that you can play and you can figure out, okay, is this worth me spending 130, 250, 400 or 500 dollars on a game that, you know, again, may not be for you. Now, speaking of that, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the pledge levels here for a second. The recommended pledge level, $220, and this is also a fraction of what you can get. And going into point number one, it's not that big of a difference. You're not saving that much money, folks. You're paying $20 less than what you would at retail. Maybe a little less as well on shipping, but it's not like you're saving $50 or $100 here. And this is on the $220. The standalone game is going to cost you $85. And the recommendation at this point probably is not just to get Unbreakable. It's not. It's not a great entry point into this game. So really, you're talking about the Too Many Bones original game for 130 or really you're talking about maybe even one of these, again, at 240 and then you have everything on up from that, and you have all of these add-ons that you can do additionally. So you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars easily right now. Can you afford hundreds and hundreds of dollars right now? Not necessarily can you afford hundreds and hundreds of dollars right now on this, on something you may or may not like, but can you afford it on this opposed to something else that is coming up? Something else like Skyrim, something else like Harakiri, something else like Senko Kushin, something else big, weather machine, if you will. Other things that you look at and you go, oh yeah, I know I'm going to like this. Oh yeah, I know this one's for me. Well, you're potentially robbing Peter to pay Paul, then, if you will. And so you need to be aware of it because that's what happens with this, is it's going to escalate. It's going to cost you a pretty ton if you're going to get 
any significant amount on the pledge side of things at this point. That leads me directly into point number three. That because there is so much, because people say, you know, this $130 is a whole lot of value for just the base game, and you can get a whole lot of play out of it. Well, this game, like many others of this ilk, is a lifestyle game. Where the repeated plays are going to be where you get your money's worth. This is $130 for one game. Or, you know, $85 if you want one of the standalones-ish. But still... How much are you paying for other games at retail? Paying 20, 30, 40? So if you play it once or twice, okay? You play it three or four times, four times at a $40 game, that's $10 per play. You know, you're gonna buy the base here 13 times to get the same equivalent value. Is that how you play your games? Is it? Because if it isn't, maybe you'd be better off buying a couple games for this price point instead that will, you know, and this is the most important thing, hit the table more. Because that's what everyone complains about in this hobby, right? Is I don't get stuff to the table. I can't play stuff enough. I can't do it. So that's what you need to be aware of. I mean, that is the most important thing. No one disputes that. So if you can't get this to the table, it doesn't matter how good of a discount you got on it. it doesn't matter how pretty it is doesn't matter that this is a deluxe, deluxe game that you are paying for because that's what Chip Theory Games puts out. They put out a super high quality neoprene mat, super heavy weighted chip based game. And you know that and you know you're going to get quality. This is sometimes more of a puzzle. A puzzle in the sense that do you enjoy, because I have often seen people refer to this game in passing of a min maxer, if you're familiar with that Dungeons and Dragons term, right? where there are certain people that are going to try to optimize things to the nth degree and play it more like a puzzle rather than necessarily a game. Do you enjoy that type of puzzle nature game where there could be a correct or a winning way? This offers that a little bit. Now, some of these other things, the waves, the rages... The splice and dice offer some ways to change things around so it's less of that. But there is also still a lot of bloat with all of these. I mean, there's a lot. You need 40 different things in one game. You ever going to play through all of those? Again, unless it's your lifestyle game that I just mentioned in the previous point. How many of these games can you have sitting on your shelf taking up space? Because let's be honest, this is also not a small space hog when you get some of this other stuff there as well. Just need to know that. Again, no one's disputing the pedigree of this game. I mean, if you scroll down here, they've got all of the accomplishments and the achievements listed out, and you can take a full list and a full reading of all of these things. This is a very, very well thought of game. But also, one thing as a side point, as an extra point, I guess, if you will, is I have still heard a lot of people talking about the rule book. And this is not a game that is known for having a good rule book, despite all of these things. Now, because it is so well thought of when you learn how to play it, that people are willing to overlook that. But it is also not the easiest to learn because one, it's more complicated than things you may or may not have played in the past. And two, when you don't have a good rule book, that makes the learning curve just, you know, twice as hard. And so the fact that there is not an easy rule book, again, goes back to my earlier point of, can you get it to the table? If the rule book is not easy to get through, if you are the person that is teaching the game to other people, that is going to make it more difficult for you to teach to other people to grasp, to want to play again, especially, again, as a lifestyle game. The point that sort of ties in with this, all of this, is that this is arguably more preferred at lower player counts. If you are a person or persons that play at three, at four, not five, because this game doesn't play to five, so I'm hoping that you're not getting this game if you have five players consistently. But I would argue that it is more recommended at the lower player counts. Now, take it for what you will, but here is the Board Game Geek polling on what people prefer. Not recommended at 
four, uh, more than four, obviously. Also, not recommended, second most at four. Recommended, a split between one and two. And you're going to look at this maybe and interpret this as, well, Chris, more people are saying it's best at three. I would argue that the majority of the people, it's at one or two. There is a good portion of people that likes it at three, but the most are going to say it's at one to two. That is where this game is really going to shine. Is that your type of game? Because if you prefer puzzly dungeon crawlers at a higher player count, there are other better games in that specific nature. Whereas this may be more for the solo optimizer or the two-player partner optimization easy situation to play in the first place. Food for thought. Okay, there you go. Five reasons that you should not back this game. Again, no one's disputing that this is going to be a great game. No one's disputing that this looks like another fantastic addition to the Too Many Bones legacy as they sort of wrap it up, if you will, in whatever that actually entails. But, as always, is it right for you? Not for me, not for anybody else, but for you. Making the most informed decisions about your backing and spending your money that you can. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you like this sort of thing. Hopefully there'll be more where this comes from. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. See you around.